This is Diane Williams and Chuck Potter. Tonight we're going to talk to you about art as healing, painting as healing. Chuck and I teach a lot of workshops and we wanted to offer something a little different, a little special during this time of um, isolation. And we find that art is very healing to us and viewing art is healing to the audience. So we're going, going to focus on art as healing. Um, so what is it about art that the world needs right now? Well, it, 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 the distraction, <laughs> I, for one, I mean, just to be able to tune everything out that's bad and all the negative information. And when, when you're confronted with a lot of negative uh, energy, it's always a good idea to you know, ground yourself in making things, you know, working the garden, working artwork, you know, cooking, you know, those kinds of uh, skills, uh, polishing your car. Um, you know, uh, any of those kinds of things are always, for me, cathartic. Yeah. Well, everyone is looking for meaning in their lives. And art can give, give you a sense of meaning. Um, it, it really pushes you deeper into yourself, deeper into the world. Um, of course, it makes you feel good. You've got the practical aspects and then you've got the the more spiritual aspects of art. And um, we lack an education system that teaches art in schools. So what we find is that most people later in life, the empty nesters, the people who are retiring, they come to us looking for meaning. And um, they don't come to us because they want to paint like us. Uh, if they do, they're gonna be pretty disappointed because we're, we're not really into teaching uh, that. What we try to do is we try to bring out what's important in every person individually um, by listening to what they have to say, by looking at their marks, by evaluating what they do. So. Yeah, there's, there's, always, there's always a little uh, technical knowledge that you have to pass on how to and kind of the DIYers out there, you know, you have to show them how to uh, mix paint, you have to show them how to mix mediums and, you know, certain little aspects like that. But really after that, we let people, we cut them loose and let them find themselves in play. Um, they and, get lost in that sense of play. And we guide them. We right. guide them and, and help them evaluate what's working, what's not working in the painting. There are a lot of technical aspects that um, really do need to be learned and internalized. And we do talk about color and composition and movement, particularly bringing the energy up from the earth and bringing it out of your body onto the surface. And that shows your authentic movement. Um, it's not just making willy-nilly marks. We really get down to the nitty-gritty, and many people say our classes are like um, therapy. <laughs> or calisthenics, or depending calisthenics. on how you look at it. No, we, we really, uh, a lot of people, they, 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 you know, they do things where they just sweep and they just, they don't know what to do, so they just do that. But we really try to get them in touch with their own dance. Um, their own rhythm and you know it takes a while it takes a little bit of courage they have to play for a while and and then when you see there's a pattern that starts to develop in their play and then you start explaining that to them and once they hear it uh, then they seem to kind of get into a motion and a swing and uh, that's when the magic really starts to happen uh, we see a lot of nice things develop it's often quite surprising we use a lot of critique as a method as well. Um, a lot of times people are very self-critical and they don't know how good they really are. I've seen wonderful work coming out of classes from people who've never painted before. They have it in them. They don't know how to see it. But in a group, a lot of their peers will tell them uh, what the painting is bringing up for them. Um, a lot of the emotions we are trying to express are universal emotions that other people are feeling as well. And when a painting resonates with a room full of people, 
it's a pretty successful piece of art. Right. Yeah, we, we always hear it and they'll say, well, I hate it. And they say, well, how can you hate it? You just started. <laughs> There's nothing to hate yet, but put some more hate on there <laughs> and we'll see if you really hate it. Well, we try to have a little fun with it. You know, it's, it's uh, something that we talk a lot about is it's a succession of failure. Um, you know, it's uh, like the Apollo 13 movie we were just watching. Recently, a story about NASA's greatest failure was their greatest success in every painting's like in Apollo 13, generally speaking. And then every now and then you get one that just comes out like that and people are so surprised they don't know what to think about it, you know. And then we tell them those are gifts, you know. Those are maybe a little pat on the back, that job well done. And you get one of those every now and then, maybe two or three, and that's really nice. But most of it's work, <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears. At, at times like this, I push myself to come into the studio. Um, a lot of times I, I may be feeling lonely, a, a bit teary or depressed. Um, we're all going through a lot of emotions in these uncertain times. Mm. Um, when I come into the studio, I become engaged in the process of making art. I leave those worries, those concerns, those tears, I leave them behind. It's all a, a process of me and the paint working together to create something unknown. Um, I never start a painting with an outcome in mind. If I do, I usually get derailed and wind up changing my course, and I'm willing to do that. And. Uh, so it's not that you're only forgetting your problems, leaving your problems beside, behind. It's that the engagement is so intense that you're, you're putting your, your soul on the edge of the abyss. You are going to fly or you're going to fall off the edge. One way or the other, your problems are long, long gone. Um, and you can bring that out of the studio uh, when you go home to cook dinner, feeling either good or contemplative. What am I going to do tomorrow? It gives us purpose. And then the audience. I find that paintings hold the energy, not only of the artist, but of all the people that view the work throughout time. So I remember a show in San Francisco of Russian icon paintings that were in churches for hundreds of years and people just adored the paintings. They poured their adoration out to the paintings. The paintings became energized with these feelings, these emotions. And the paintings were small, not that they were particularly great paintings, but they were so energized with the people's love pouring out to them that the paintings actually vibrated, they actually glowed. And, um, and this is hundreds of years ago and they're still glowing today in museums. Every uh, painting we, we talk about becomes an adventure and the struggles, all those things are recorded, you know, in, in the body movements and uh, the uh, emotion of the stroke, the uh, personality of the compositions, the colors chosen, they all become part of it. And you know, like you said, yeah, people looking at them over, over years, uh, those things are kind of picked up on the, yeah. on the piece. And the piece becomes, you know, once, once it's done, it kind of evolves and it's like a child, or, you know, you set free in the world and it becomes its own, thing at that time and you know you were you were part of it and you've launched it out in the world and it becomes its own its own at that it, point it, it does in china what was interesting was that paintings would uh pass from owner to owner and owners would add their own calligraphy their own poetry onto the paintings and they would add their own chalk marks onto the paintings so when you view these beautiful Chinese works, you can see, you know, a dozen chalk marks, you know, five or six poems, all adding to the piece. 
And whether or not we're physically marking on the piece or whether or not we're just loving the piece, contemplating the piece, being with the piece, we're leaving a part of ourselves into the piece. Um, there's nothing like it. It can't, it can't be viewed online. It has to be, it has to be seen and felt. Yeah. So we are uh, envisioning a world where painting is as important as prayer in helping us connect with our spirituality and find meaning in our lives. Yeah, in fact, I, I always believe that uh, painting is a, is a form of prayer. Um, it, you know, it involves uh, the communication with um, something bigger in, in uh, a source where you come from. So it does, it does reach out to um, our beginnings or our ends, how you look at it, and uh, there's a connection. And, um, I feel it all the time. Yeah. So healing is about accepting your situation, being at peace with your situation, being able to face the situation with courage, and to move beyond the physical into a plane that is beyond the physical. Yep. That's all I've got to say. Me too. All right. <laughs> Have a good evening. So be safe and thank you. Please visit my website, which is dianewilliamsart.net. Chuck Potter uh, art.net, and we're part of INI Studio. Good night.